I don't think I ever mentioned the premise behind this build. This is a quarantine build. Basically use what you got. And all I have right now are rattle cans. I thought I had some flocking that would be the same color, but it's not quite the same. But I have something else. This is embossing powder. It's basically just crushed up plastic. Whereas the flocking is just shaved fabric from my understanding. So let's finish ripping this tape off here and we'll get to work. I struggle a bit here because I really didn't want to scratch the black paint because I didn't have a lot of it to do touch-ups and that piece of tape was really stuck down. Yeah, there is a, not a lot to this interior. That's basically all there is to that console. Just a handbrake and whatever those knobs are. Here I just kind of mocked the interior up just so I know where not to put this stuff. Normally to hold down the flocking pattern I would use either Elmer school glue or unthinned clear and just brush it on. Naturally, I do not want to waste li what little bit of clear I have, and I don't have any glue. Luckily, my wife had some Mod Podge in her work area, so we're going to do a bit of experiment here, see how this works. And as you saw what I just did with that brush there, I will do that with everything I brush. I will run my finger along the bristles to knock out any dust, and I'll pull on it to get any loose hairs out. I don't remember why I was pointing at these, I just, I don't remember. dog here.
And as I've used this stuff in the past, I remember it not sticking that well. So I'm doing kind of a bit of a heavy coat on that Mod Podge. And just light taps here, because if you hit too hard, you will knock that stuff free. I made just a bit of a goof on the steering wheel and the dashboard. In the reference photos I was using, I was looking at the challenge car which has basically just a solid black molded dashboard so i just painted mine all black if i were to own one of these cars that would be my preference anyway i'm not a big fan of the shiny flashy carbon fiber or the titanium accents that's just my preference And right here, you'll see why it's a good idea to not glue over paint, because that just fell apart. There are no tabs or keys on these seats to make sure they're aligned the same. So just take your time here. Make sure they're right. Right about here is where I start to lose my mind and I realize why Fujimi likes to mold in the bottom of their seats. If I line it up in the rails, the seat's crooked. If I go off the rails, the seat doesn't sit high enough to match the other one. This was a nightmare. And as I mentioned in some of the other videos, 
I like to just let droplets fall off that nozzle right where I want that stuff to go. Remember what I said earlier about gluing over paint? Yeah, right there is why. And I felt the door cards bulge out a bit when I installed that dash, so I'm just reinforcing them at the bottom. I showed this engine as just being a solid plate. I used my coping saw method I showed in a previous video to cut that out and make it all look open to give it a sense of depth and it's not just one solid ugly plate. There are three different models of this car. The standard F430, the F430 Challenge, and the F430 Scuderia. Depending on which model you have, you're either going to have red, black, or silver valve covers. I left mine silver just to make painting easier, and once I install the intake plenum, you can't see them. Not sure what this little piece is between the air filter boxes, but I do know there's a hose coming off of it, so we drill a hole to install a hose later. And I'm doing that now before paint, just in case that bit walks on me and I don't scratch my fine paint job. And I do apologize in advance for not recording this, but that intake plenum, the red, it just painted in zero paints textured paint. Take your time masking if you're masking on uneven surfaces, because paint will find a way to bleed under. It's 4 a.m. Everyone's in bed. I don't want to run downstairs, turn on the booth, do all that, so I'm just going to paint this right here in the hallway. The 
this looks so shiny on camera but it is not that shiny in real life another dog hair now with the throttle bodies masked off we'll move on to painting the air boxes I don't have a lot of black this is something I found in the garage when I moved in we're gonna give it a try I found the source of the dog hair. I'm just checking this on their light, make sure there's no hair in it. I'm just in the hallway right now playing that black. A cheap paint does not cover that well, so it took more than just one layer. Let's just wait for it to dry. It seriously took that long. There is zero cloth in this, so that dried within 30 seconds. Get off of me. And I will admit I was kind of scared to peel this masking tape off. I've heard some horror stories about their textured paint, but I had no problems. Probably because I'm using cheap tape, but you never know. And I remember since I installed Photo Edge, we could see that ugly muffler through that, so we gotta make it look pretty. I'm just gonna dry brush some metallic colors to give it the look of just being metal. Now for some reason, this is showing up very heavy on camera. It is not that silver. I got some other gold and silver somewhere, I just gotta find them. With this, I'm just going to go over the seams and the bends to give it a heat staining look.
It is unreal how bright this shows up on camera. It's gotta be the artificial light I use. Look at it reflecting off the lid. It is not that bright or reflective in real life. I was just gonna go over it with some gunmetal to tone it down, but I'm just gonna throw that away. I do want to thank you again for making it to the end. Thank you for watching.